says here in this love, not that we love God, but that he loved us Amen. and sent his son to be the perpetuation for our sins. Now that's something to get excited about. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now wait a minute. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> My wife says, honey, how'd you enjoy that meal? It was good. <laughs> Do you think that's why she wanted me to say it? Nope. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> Aren't you glad that God loves you? Amen. Amen. Much better, much better. But I like what else that verse said. He was the perpetuation not for our sins only, but for the sin of the whole world. Amen. I heard a preacher preaching this past week and he was one that I really had enjoyed listening to. But then he said that God's love was restricted to just those that he had foreknown and predestinated. Uh, so I turned channels. Yeah, he much. lost me right then and there. Yes, sir. It is good to know that God loves everyone. Amen. 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 God loves everyone. Well, visitors, we are so glad to have you with us today. And we hope that you will enjoy the service. Now, I've realized that we had a good uh, a good rain as we were dismissing from Sunday school. And, uh, probably some got up this morning, looked outside and said, it's raining, I can't go to church. <laughs> but I'm glad that you came. Amen. I really am glad that you're here this morning. I'm glad that I'm here. Amen. I'm glad that the Lord is here. Amen. 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 With visitors, we do appreciate you being part of our service. I have a favor to ask of you, and that's this. In the program, the bulletin, which I hope you got a copy of, there is a little welcome section in there if you will fill that out. As you leave the service today, the ushers will be at the back. You can just give it to one of the ushers, and we'd appreciate that, okay? Church, it's good to have you with us today. Amen. It's good to have some back with us that hadn't been able to be with us in a while. Amen. We're glad they're here as well. This is Midway Baptist Church. We welcome all of those that are viewing us through electronic means. We pray that they'll be blessed by being a part of this service as well. Let's go for the Lord in the word of prayer, okay? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning for this opportunity that we have 
to assemble ourselves together into this place of worship and to be able to truly worship you. Father, in our Sunday school class this morning, the lesson was brought forth to us about how the Lord viewed the worship of the Israelites and how he was not pleased with them. Father, I pray that today our worship will be pleasing unto yes, you. Father, it can only be pleasing unto you if we focus upon you. If we focus upon your goodness, your mercy, your grace, and your love, we can truly worship today. Amen. And I pray that we'll do that. Father, as we think about this day, 9-11, Father, our minds go back to what happened in this country uh, some 20 one years ago. And Father, we don't want to forget the families of those whose loved ones perished in the attack upon our homeland. Father, we don't want to forget those that were willing to uh, leave our homeland and go and Father, try to bring about justice for the wrong that was done. Father, we pray for their families as well. We pray for them that returned as well. And Father, we thank you for those that freely gave the ultimate sacrifice that our freedoms could remain. Lord, we just bring them before you today, this day of remembrance. And Father, we pray that you'll be with each and every one that was affected by the events of that day and the events that followed that day. Father, we thank you today for these that are in our service today. We pray that our worship will be acceptable to you. Thank you for those that are viewing today. I pray that they will experience worship as they uh, partake of this service today. We just ask that all be done for your glory and for your honor. And we pray and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I have an announcement that I need to make. I was going to wait to the end, but I'm afraid some of you might get away before I get to announce it. Uh, would you check to see if you've lost some money? Some money was found here at the church up here about the camera. I, I won't tell you how much because somebody already told me that if I tell them how much, they'd tell me whether it was theirs or not. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, if you've lost some money, uh, see me after service, okay? All right, Brother Jim. Did he drop me a hand? <laughs> <laughs> God's good. All the time. All the time. God's good. Amen. I wish y'all could have been here last uh, Thursday night. We had a choir practice. Oh, did we have one. Had, uh, I don't know, right at the uh, I think around 40 people, 40, 45 people back in the choir. That's such a blessing. But if you missed it, you could either sing in the choir come Saturday night or you can come and enjoy what's going to take place. We're going to have that Jubilee reunion this coming Saturday night. It starts at 6 o'clock. The choir's going to assemble at 5 30. And I tell you what, I, I just feel it that uh, it's going to be different. It's not going to be able to sing it like we normally had. But we've had some good ones. This is going to be a deal about loving each other and lifting up the name of Jesus. Amen. That's what it's going to be about. And I'm excited. I am really excited about it. And I'll quit talking in a second. We had a little talk over over in the choir meeting all about staying in your lane. My lane's not preaching. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, how did Jesus say that uh, people will know that we're his followers? He said we'll be known by our love for each other. Amen. It's a good day. Yes, it is. I love this song, and you do too, and you know it by heart. I love to sing it. Victory in Jesus. Page 499 in the Baptist hymnal. Stand up, and we'll sing about three stanzas, all three stanzas. Victory in Jesus, 499.
You know, with that birthday anniversary thing, we say we have to play it through twice to get everybody up here for celebrate. Get kind of getting that way with the choirs. <laughs> it takes, I play through the song a whole other time. Anyway, this morning, Philip and Sheila are going to come and sing this song that will make the hair crawl on the back of your neck. I'm not going to tell you the title of it. It's going to bless your heart. It's going to get you feeling good if you don't. I already feel good. But if you ain't, you are you're going to get to feeling good. And then we're going to hear the word preached. And we're going to throw out a whole bunch of amens too, aren't we? <laughs> well, <laughs> we are going to have a few amens, aren't we? Amen. amen. Hey, we can have, even have a few amens for Philip and Sheila too. All right. Come on. Thank <laughs> you. 
question.
Oh, Amen. I enjoy it, but the best is yet to come. Amen. Amen. That's the word. I just have to remind Sister Carolyn that the scripture says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish for the issues. <laughs> I, I was thinking as they were singing the song, I was thinking, I wonder who is going to be the most excited at that event. Is it going to be those that are coming from heaven with the Lord? Or is it going to be those that are still living here that get changed? It's something to think about. <clears throat> All I know is that I'm going to be happy whichever state that I'm in. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 11. <clears throat> Luke chapter 11, <clears throat> and I'm going to share with you this morning the third message in a series of messages on prayer. I've heard a lot about prayer this week. I've heard uh, folks even this morning talking about their devotion this morning was on the subject of prayer. Prayers I've said many times before, and I've also said it in this series of messages, prayer is one of the greatest resources that we as Christians have Amen. to accomplish the will of God in our lives. Amen. Now we have other resources. Thank God for that. We have the Word of God. Amen. We have the Spirit of God. Amen. But thankful we have communication with God. Yes. And that's called prayer. I'm going to read from Luke chapter 11, and I hope you don't get tired of hearing this passage of Scripture uh, because I've shared it every message in this series, most likely will until I conclude the message. It's a very, I think, informative, instructional passage of Scripture on the subject of prayer. Let's read a few verses starting at verse 1, Luke chapter 11. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place, I pause, the he that was praying was Jesus. I've said many times before, said it to myself, <clears throat> I've said it to those that I've shared with in teaching and preaching. If Jesus saw the necessity of praying, let me say that again. If Jesus saw the necessity in praying, how much more should you and I see the necessity? Amen. We should. So as Jesus is praying in a certain place, when he sees that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, Teach us to pray. I'm going to pause just for a moment. I've shared this, I believe, in each introduction of each one of the messages in this series. The, <clears throat> the question, not really the question, the statement made by the disciple was not, Lord, teach us how to pray. It was, Lord, teach us to pray. Amen. Teach us to pray. Now, there certainly is instruction in this passage on what to pray for, how to pray. But the first thing is teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Let us see the need. Let us see the necessity. Let us have the unction about us to want to pray. Teach me, Lord, the necessity of prayer. As John also taught his disciples, so he said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That's reading from the King, New King James Version. Let's pray. Father, once again, we approach your throne of grace and with thankful hearts. <clears throat> we thank you for the opportunity to be in this service. Thank you for the good singing that we've had. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the 
reflection that we can have through the words of a song. Lord, I thank you for this time that we have to preach your word. Lord, I just pray that for the next few minutes that you will use us to minister to this congregation and to those that may be viewing us. May the things that are said today be the things that you would have to be said. Father, may it be received in the way that you would have us to receive it. And Lord, the accomplishments of it, for you said that your word would not return unto you void, for the accomplishments of it will give you praise, glory, and honor. For it's in Christ's name I pray and I ask it. Amen. Amen. Just a quick <clears throat> reflection back, <clears throat> a summary of what we have seen in this message. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I've already commented on the fact that the disciple asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. And in this passage of scripture, certainly the Lord addresses several things that we need to be cognizant of when we do pray. How to approach prayer. Such things as paying reverence to the Father. Such things as praying for the kingdom of God. Praying that the will of God be accomplished. Oftentimes we say, I pray that God's will be done in your life. And that's good. And that's a good prayer. Amen. But let it first begin with, God, let your will be done in my life. Amen. Let it be done in my life. You know, without seeing that and recognizing that, it's like a 500 pound man trying to tell someone how to eat properly. Amen. Y'all didn't catch that, did you? Either that or you didn't like it, one of the two. <clears throat> you see, praying for the will of God in your own life helps you to pray for the will of God in the lives of others. Amen. And so the Lord tells us and teaches us that. It is in this passage in this prayer an acknowledgement of our dependence upon God to meet our every need our every daily need in this prayer Jesus teaches us that hey listen when you're praying don't forget to ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins uh, now I know there's some that think they've got a free pass beyond that one but no there are no get out of jail free cards on that one we're all sinners. Yes, we are. The only difference between you and I in one major respect, the other being a lost person and you being a saved person, me being a saved person, is that we're saved from our sin by the grace of God and they are yet to be saved. Amen. See, we're all sinners saved by the grace of God. So we acknowledge, Lord, I need your forgiveness in my life. Amen. I haven't yet arrived. As the hymn hill sung that song many years ago, he's still working on me. Amen. I know I'm not perfect. He is working on me though. So in this prayer, not only do we see praying for the forgiveness of our sins, the Lord says something very interesting here. He says, pray for the forgiveness of your sins in the manner in which you forgive others that have sinned against you. Amen. Mm. One amen. Asking the Lord to forgive you your sins in the manner in which you forgive others of their sin. Amen. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you, that's to some, all of us probably, that's a, that's a rough bone to get down. Yes, it is. But it's true. Amen. And then... <clears throat> We're to pray for the Lord's leadership in our life. And then that last statement. But deliver us from the evil one. The King James says that we should pray that we would be delivered from evil. Now, whether you want to view it as the evil one or evil, the Lord says we're supposed to pray and ask the Lord to deliver us from evil. 
And folks, I have, uh, and I'm going to share towards the end of this this morning, I'm going to share with you the names of the evil things that we need to be delivered from. And I would encourage you to remember these in your time of prayer, asking the Lord to deliver you from these evil things. But first, I want us to look at this thing about evil, about evil. What does evil mean? If Jesus said, pray that you be delivered from the evil one, I think it would do me well, and do you well to understand what that's saying, what is that? What is the evil? What is the even evil one? Well, if you were to look in dictionaries, you'd find a whole multitude of definitions and synonyms for this thing that we call evil. Let me just give a few of those to you. Evil means profoundly immoral. Amen. Profoundly immoral. What does the word immoral mean? Without morals. Without morals. Well, folks, I have a great burden upon my heart as to where our country is going, where our nation is going. Amen. For it seems that in every which way you turn, uh, immorality is being broadcast in all different aspects and in different ways. Even in our own governmental system, immorality is being broadcast. I heard this week, and I forgot the name of the state, but there is a state considering a law which makes the definition of a parent to be inclusive of a school system. And someone might ask, why would a school system want to be designated as a parent? For a parent has designated rights when it comes to the rearing of their children. One of which is about this trans gender movement in our country. And so many within our country are wanting to promote the right for transgender teaching to the children in the school. And if they so desire to be a transgender, that they, the school, can give the authority for it to happen. Isn't that a sad state? That's immorality, my friend. And what is immorality? It's evilness. It is evilness is what it is. Profoundly immoral and wicked. I don't know if there's any of us like to be referred to as a wicked person. I guess one of my first exposures to something called wicked people was the wicked, wicked witch of the, was she from the west or the east? I don't remember where she was from. And the good one was from the east, right? Yeah. But folks, listen. To be evil means you're wicked. You're wicked. To be evil means something that brings sorrow, distress, or calamity. Something that brings sorrow, distress, or calamity. Oh, Father, it means bad. It means bad. I think we can comprehend what the word bad means. It's the opposite of good. Bad. Ill. Again, immorality. Iniquity. Wrong. Wrong. But the best definition of wickedness is sin. Yes. Sin. 
I believe we know what sin is. I won't go back and re-preach my message on sin. But if you forgot, if you'll see me after service, I'll, I'll refresh your memory on it. It's sin. It's sin. We ask them, why does evil exist? Why does evil exist? I was reading this past week about one of the arguments of an atheist. And one of the arguments of an atheist is that if there was a God, evil would not exist. You know what the thrust of that philosophy is? That if there is a God, he created evil. Because if there was a God, he wouldn't allow that. And the opposite is, okay, if there is a God, then he created the evil. Well, I'm, I'm going to share something with you, which I don't believe is going to be news to you, but wouldn't hurt to be refreshed in it a little bit. God did not create evil. God did not create sin. If I said sin and evilness are synonymous then I'll say God did not create either one of those. Whatever you want to call it, God did not create it. I shared with the folks this past Wednesday night in the devotion, Brother Doc was sick and unable to be with us. So I taught last Wednesday evening. I don't know if anybody else got anything out of it, but I sure was blessed by it. I preached on the subject or taught on the subject of how to make the Bible relevant in your life. And I said, it starts with this. You've got to see the authenticity of it. You've got to recognize the validness of it. You cannot begin to make the Bible relevant in your life until you acknowledge that it is God's word. You can't do it. And, and I'm not going to go into a discussion of that, but I'm going to say this. It is God's word that tells us that God did not invent, create, cause evilness. No, he didn't. Listen to this passage of scripture. In the book of 1 John, in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5. 1 John chapter 1 verse 5, and I'll get there about the same time you do. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, John writing to these Christian people says, this is the message which we have heard from him. From who? From God. We've heard from him. Who's him? Christ. And declare it to you that God is light. How many of us believe God is light? Bless those that couldn't raise their hands. <laughs> God is light, but it doesn't end there. It says, and in him, and in him is no darkness at all. <laughs> God did not invent evilness. God did not create evilness. God did not invent sin. And God did not invent evilness. Everything God created was seen as good. Amen. Hey, yes, go back and read Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. And it says that upon that seventh day, God looked and God saw that everything he had created was good. Not just good, but very good. Amen. Who amongst us would say evil is good? Who amongst us would say bad is good? Who amongst us would say that immorality is good? Who amongst us would say that sin was good? No, it's not good. And only goodness comes from God. Amen. Evilness, sin occur because of the principle of free will. You and I, humanity, and I'll say more about this in just a minute. 
Humanity was not the first to be endowed with something called the principle of free will. We're going to look at that in just a moment. But in essence, it means that humanity and others, which I'll explain in just a moment, were given the option or were given the ability to make decisions. Amen. Whether that decision was good or bad. As long as those that were endowed with the principle of free will chose rightly, things were great. Well, maybe this would be a good time to explain which created individual that had this principle of free will decided to choose evil as opposed to to good. Read with me, if you will, from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, verse 15. You can just make note of it. Let me read it. I've got a lot to get to you, very little time to get it to you. So let me just share with you what it says. And you make note and you can check me out. Ezekiel, chapter 28, verse 15. You. Who is the you? It is none other than the most beautiful angel God ever created. His name is Lucifer. Be as a bub. Satan. And the word says you, Satan, be as a bub. Lucifer. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Who was the first? What was the first to choose evilness? Lucifer. Say, he was. John chapter 8, Jesus gives some insight into this Lucifer, Satan. Let me read to you, starting at verse 42 of John chapter 8. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I proceed forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. Why were they unable to listen to his word? You are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, not from the resource of God, but from himself he speaks. For he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell you the truth, why do you not believe me? Jesus gives us tremendous insight into the character, the integrity of Satan and of what he has been able to do in the lives of other people. Drag them, woo them, convince them into evilness. So where did evil come from? It came from Satan. 
And sadly, 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 when man, woman, boy, girl, commits evil, they have from their own free will committed evil at their own choice. Now the devil didn't make you do it. You did. The devil didn't make me do it. I did it. He may have tempted. He may have hung the carrot out in front of the old horse. What some might refer to me as the old mule. And it was I that partook of it. It was I that succumbed to as Eve did in the garden when she looked, she beheld, she saw its beauty, she thought about its taste, and she gave in to her free will choice and partook of it. Then she dangled it in front of her husband, Adam, I would have thought he'd had more backbone than he had. <laughs> but he partook of it as well. Their eyes were open. They realized that they had committed evil. And what did they do? They went and grabbed fig leaves and tried to make clothes and hide their nakedness. But in the cool of the evening, the voice of God came walking through the garden. And cried out, Adam, where art thou? And finally, when Adam could resist no longer the conviction of God, here I am. I was naked. Eve was naked. We made clothes for ourselves. Have you partaken of that which you should not have? Adam, the woman you gave me, she calls me to do it. The woman points at Satan, that old serpent that you allowed in the garden has caused me to commit evil. Are you evil today? Are you with sin today? Who do you point at and blame for your evilness. Friend, I want you to know something. There is not but one remedy for evilness. Not but one remedy. I want to read you a passage of scripture that describes what that one remedy is. And again, it is in the book of John, 1st John, chapter 3. He says this, Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, listen, the slim lady used to say, grab a hold of this, tie a knot in it, and hang on. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, revealed, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Our only hope for the evilness that abounds amongst us is Jesus Christ. Amen. And the scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, for he hath made him, him who? Jesus, he hath made him to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. 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 Without the shedding of the blood, there can be no remission of sin. Without the application of the blood of Christ to us individually, 
there is no forgiveness of sin. We pay the debt for that which we've committed. Are you under the blood today? Are you washed in the blood today? You know, you as well as I, and as all of us, we've all been guilty of committing evil. So we all have a need of cleansing. We can't blame God with evilness. God didn't make that. Satan was the first. And because mankind listens to Satan, mankind is now committed evil. There's not one remedy for it. His name is Jesus. Amen. And if you'll put your faith and your trust, your belief in Jesus Christ, calling upon his name, asking him to forgive you of your sin, to cleanse you of your sin in the name of Jesus, God will do that. Amen. You'll be made whole today. As the choir sung the song, I believe it was today, you sung victory in Jesus, didn't you, Jim? Amen. You'll have victory over evilness in the Lord. Amen. Now, let me just give you a little meat to chew on until we meet again. There are four things. There are four things. I'm finally done with the introduction. <laughs> There are four evil things that you and I need deliverance from. At least four. Number one, our conscience. Number two, our heart. Number three, our speech. And number four, our appearance. And yes, they're all biblical. And we'll be looking at them. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your message. I thank you for the opportunity to share another message. I pray that it has done that which you would have it to do. Lord, I pray that you've been pleased with it. And Lord, I pray that it's been received. And I pray that now, Lord, that as we come to the time to react, uh, to uh, respond to your word, to your message, I pray that we'd be willing to do it. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's sing hymn number 229 in the Baptist hymnal. 229 in the Baptist hymnal. If you have a need of coming to the altar for salvation, for rededication, for church membership, or you just want to pray,